Hello, welcome to this video on Bodhicharya Avatar, chapter 7, verse 68. Tatra Kangang Yata Brashtang Grihniyat Sabhayastvaram Smriti Kangan Tata Brashtang Grihniyan Narakan Smaran I'll call up the text. There we are. Large. Tatra Kangang Yata Brashtang Grihniyat Sabhayastvaram Smriti Kangan Tata Brashtang Grihniyan Narakan Smaran Yata correlates with Tata. So just as one does everything mentioned in the first line, so in that way, Tata, thus one does everything in the second line. So Yata, just as. Tatra. Tatra means there, but also at that point in such a circumstance. So just as at that point, Grihniyat, one might pick up, one might, this is the optative form, one might pick up or take the, a fallen sword, a brashtang kangam. Um, what a note in it here. Yeah, brush, also branch with a, with, um, a nasal, both, both exist. Past parcel brashta means fallen. Don't confuse it with bram brahmati, past parcel branta meaning to wander and roam, by extension to be lost or confused. So the Brashtam Kangam um, would be the, the fallen sword. If you let your sword drop, if you see you're being approached by a trained enemy swordsman, you will, you will grihniat, one would pick up the Brashtam Kangam, the, your fallen sword, the sword that have fallen from, from your hand. And how would you pick it up? Sabhayas, um, without without applying santi, sabhaya, bhaya, fear, sabhaya, fearfully, in fear. You'd pick it up in fear, sabhaya, with fear. And twaram is, um, means hastily or speedily. It's from the, the root twar, twarate, an atmane pada, class one verb, meaning to hurry or to hasten. It makes the verbal noun twara. But I think I'm right in saying that it's only ever used adverbially. It can be used either as an accusative noun or as an instrumental noun. Tvaram or tvarena. Um, and satvaram you'll also see, meaning hastily, quickly. So, yata as grihniyat, one might pick up at that point, tatra, ibrashtam kangam, a fallen sword. Sabhaya, fearfully, and twaram, in haste. Tata, in the same way, grihniyat, one should pick up the brashtam, fallen smriti kangam, sword of mindfulness. Smaran, remembering, the Narakan, remembering the hells, the lower realms that you can go to if uh, you act without mindfulness. So you speedily pick up the sword of mindfulness if you see that you are being attacked by the defilements. So I will read this again. Tatra Kangang Yata Brashtang Grihniyat Sabhayast Tvaram Smriti Kangan Tata Brashtang Grihniyat Narakan Smaran. This verb Grihniyat, um, I'll just go through with it, go through it with you. Um, the root is grih, 
gribu uzsiesī grab. And it's cognate with the English word grab, it means to means to take. Um, and it's a class nine verb, so you get the root and you put na in the middle, so he she it takes grihnati and with the nasal the um retroflexing of that na grihnati. Now we have a nati in class nine, the optative the na becomes ni and the niat. Niat. The optative of a regular class one verb is et. Of a class nine verb is niat. Niat. One should take up. But the the form without the b um, is much. You can't say grihniat, but grihniat is is far more common. Bhaya means fear. Sabhaya is an adjective meaning fearful, with fear, having fear. So fearful, you speedily take up a sword. And equally, smriti kangang tathabrasham grihniyat. In that way, one should take up the mindfulness sword, remembering the, the hells. Um, this smaran from smri, smarati, to remember, smaran is the present participle, the masculine, uh, masculine singular form. I've done a comparative table on this for Sanskrit and Pali, and I'll just call it up in the study resources guide here. Um, so, so you'll be able to find it. So the grammar lessons and notes. So I'm I'm showing I need to redo the page numbers on this. I'm showing you an interim draft. I'll correct all these page numbers um, in the draft I should be sending out very soon after after today. Um, today being the 14th of September 2023. So go down to um, a little bit beyond page 22. Um, so on my Google Drive, so let's go down to here. Consonantal stem. So MacDonnell 85, it is sims in at and mat and vat. Um, for a comparative Sanskrit poly table, 85, 86b, okay. You, you'll find the, this in the Google Notes, Google Drive Notes, call up Google Drive. Um, and we see the, which all we ought to see. Here we are, yes. Comparative table, Sanskrit Pali. And this will explain um, how the present participle is formed and the very common um, adjectives ending in month and vant, which behave in almost exactly the same way. A couple of differences that are um, that are explained here. And as usual, in this comparative table, let me enlarge it for you. Oops. Oh, slightly over enlarged it. Oh. How do you make it larger? Here we are. As usual, uh, where I'm doing a comparative thing between Sanskrit and Pali, Sanskrit is in the red and um, Pali is in the green. So, this is a past participle of which the stem is either at or ant, it's both. It's called a variable stem. So the form, the form ending in ant, you'll never actually see used as a word on its own, as a grammatical abstraction. And you get the nominative charan. It would have been charant or even charants, save that no Sanskrit word can end in more than one consonant. Um, so that um, the end consonants drop off to charan. To leave charan, I should say. But in the accusative where you add 
um, it's cherantam, so now you get the, the full form of the stem, cherantam. But it's a variable stem, so you have what's called the weak form, so from the instrumental through to the locative, the, the end drops out. So instrumental cherata, dative cherate, ablation from genitive cherata, locative cherati. Um, and you know, they're the, the standard endings, the a, 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 and e for the instrumental through to the locative for the co consonantal stems. And you'll see that the Pali follows, follows fairly closely. Note, however, for Pali, that Pali can also make an entire regular a stem. So as well as charang, charan with a n in Sanskrit, but with anusvara charam in Pali. Pali also allows um, charanto, charantam, charantassa, charantena, and so on. It all Pali, but Sanskrit does not allow it to, to, to simplify it into an ordinary uh, declension ending in a short a. Ah. So there is the explanation of the present participle. And, and let's get back to the text. And that accounts for the smaran, root smri, smarati, smaran, masculine, nominative singular, remembering. Narakan, smaran. Naraka, masculine noun, meaning a hell. Um, accusative plural with an, so narakan, smaran, remembering the hells. You're, you are assailed by the clashes, then remembering the hells, you should fearfully pick up the sword to do battle with the with the clashes, with the de defilements. So I'll read once more and then wind this one up. Tatra kangam yatha brashtam grihniyat sabhayastvaram smriti kangan tatha brashtam grihniyan narakan smaran. And that's it for verse 68.